Hey, I'm Ryan, and welcome to Nest Hacker. In this video, I'm going to tell you about binary and hexadecimal numbers and explain a bit about how they're used. It's going to get mathy. Binary and hexadecimal are ways to encode numbers that are useful when programming computers or hacking digital electronics. Since the original Nintendo is a computer, a firm understanding of both can make things a lot easier if you want to hack ROMs or make your own games. Games themselves are encoded in binary, and ultimately it's binary numbers that determine what the NES shows on the screen what sounds it plays, and how it reacts when you press the A button. Hexadecimal is a way of encoding numbers that makes it particularly easy for humans to read and write data that's meant to be interpreted as binary by a computer. As a matter of fact, the primary tool you use when making a ROM hack is called a hex editor. It allows you to make changes to binary ROM files without having to parse millions of ones and zeros. Our goal in this episode is to familiarize you with binary and hexadecimal numbers. We'll do so by first showing you how to read them and then explaining a bit about how they're used. But before we proceed, do me a favor by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. After that, we'll take a look at the types of numbers that you're probably most familiar with, decimal numbers. For the most part, when you encounter numbers in your daily life, they're probably decimal numbers. The encoding for a decimal number is based on the number 10, and as a matter of fact, another term for decimal is base 10. So what does it mean for a number to be base 10? Well, here's a number in base 10, specifically the number 476. Now this number has three digits, with a 4 in the hundreds place, a 7 in the tens place, and a 6 in the ones place. Taking that into account, we can express the number like this. In order to see where the number 10 comes into play here, let's do a little arithmetic. First, we pull out all the digits from the terms, like so. Then we change the way we express each of the factors. There. Now we can see that each of the digits are being multiplied by a power of 10. The rightmost digit, in this case 6, is being multiplied by 10 to the 0th power, or 1. The next digit, 7, by 10 to the 1st power, and so on. This is the defining characteristic of a decimal number. They're encoded in such a way that to find the number's value, you multiply each of its digits by successively larger powers of 10 and add them all together. The second characteristic is a bit more subtle. Decimal has exactly 10 numerals. Put another way, the only possible values for a single digit of any decimal number are 0 through 9. After 9, it takes a minimum of two digits to represent the number. At this point, you may find yourself in a state of confusion. And there's actually a good reason to be confused. I'm trying to explain decimal numbers using decimal numbers. This means any example that I choose will come across as somewhat contrived and a bit self-evident. But things should become a bit more clear if we take the same concepts and apply them to a different type of number, specifically a binary number. All right, so here's an example of a binary number. Notice that it looks a lot like a decimal number, but it only uses zeros and ones. To make sure that we know that this is the binary number 1001 and not the decimal number 1001, let's add a bit of notation. There. That little 2 tells us that the number is being expressed in binary or base 2. Binary numbers are similar to decimal numbers, except that instead of being based on 10 and powers of 10, they're based on 2 and powers of 2. To see how it works, let's convert this binary number into decimal. Starting from the right, we multiply each of the digits by larger and larger powers of 2, and add the results together. This should all look pretty similar to what we did for decimal numbers, except that instead of having powers of 10, we 
have powers of 2. Next, we simplify the expression by removing the terms that are multiplied by 0 and simplifying the powers of 2. Finally, we add the terms together to get the final result. With the process complete, we see that the binary number 1001 is equivalent to the decimal number 9. When we showed the process for decimal numbers, it looked pretty redundant. But here we see that the process can be used to convert a binary number into decimal. And since it's easier for us to interpret decimal numbers, this is quite useful. Let's try another, larger example. How about 10110111 base 2? Let's make the process a little faster. Moving across the digits from right to left, we count up the powers of 2. If our current digit is a 1, we add that power of 2 to our total. Otherwise, we omit it. Starting from the right, we have 1 plus 2 plus 4, skip 8, plus 16 plus 32, skip 64, plus 128. This gives us the final answer of 183. OK, so this is a pretty good time to recap what we've covered so far. First, we talked about decimal or base 10 numbers. These are the kind of numbers that are most commonly used by humans. They're encoded using powers of 10 and have exactly 10 digits, 0 through 9. Next, we took a look at binary or base 2 numbers. These are the kind of numbers that are most commonly used with computers. They're encoded using powers of 2, and they have only two digits, 0 and 1. While this is all very useful from a technical perspective, it doesn't really address a pretty big question. Why do computers use binary instead of decimal? As far as I understand it, there are many reasons, but most of them boil down to simplicity. From a certain perspective, binary is actually the simplest possible way to encode a number, as you only need two symbols. It's important to remember that digital computers are physical objects that require the construction of very precise electronic circuitry. It's much easier to manufacture, test, and use components that are based on two states than those based on three or more. Also, don't discount simple momentum. While we can and have used other number bases, the vast majority of computers since the 1940s have been based on binary. It's just a lot easier to keep going with binary, as it gets the job done and it's what everyone is already using. So this brings us to hexadecimal, or base 16. As you can probably guess, this is an encoding based on the use of 16 different symbols, which is a lot. So if the use of binary is based on a simplicity of only having two symbols, why in the world would we use hexadecimal in relation to computers? Well, as it turns out, the use of hexadecimal has a lot less to do with computers and a lot more to do with humans. So here's one way to write my name in binary. Pretty straightforward, right? Clearly the 01010010 is an R and so on. I'm just kidding, it pretty much looks like gibberish. As a matter of fact, this number, which looks very similar, is gibberish. And just in case you were wondering, this is how you spell the word gibberish in binary. But I digress. The point here is that it's quite hard to distinguish the exact differences between two strings of binary numbers. And I think that's because the ones and zeros are just so plain. It makes these large numbers look pretty monotonous and unremarkable. Humans are actually really good at being able to recognize and differentiate between complex and nuanced symbols. I mean, just look at Japanese. Compared to the ones and zeros of binary, the shapes in any human language are quite complex. And that's the rub. While binary simplicity makes it great for computers, that same simplicity makes it terrible for humans. So this is where hexadecimal, or base 16, comes into play. Because it kind of has the best of both worlds. It has a lot of symbols, which makes it easier for us to interpret, but it also has a mathematical connection to binary, because 16 is a power of 2. To see what I mean, let's take a look at a couple examples. First, let's talk about numerals in hexadecimal. As I said before, there are 16 of them. 
we have our 10 familiar numerals from decimal, 0 through 9, plus 6 more, a through f. These additional numerals represent the values from 10 through 15, with a representing 10, b representing 11, all the way up to f representing 15. While you don't have to memorize what each of the letters denotes, it does make interpreting hexadecimal numbers a lot easier. Regardless, here's an example of a hexadecimal number. Let's convert this number to decimal using the same algorithm that we did for binary. Except this time we'll use powers of 16 instead of powers of 2. To perform the conversion, we multiply each digit by its respective power of 16 and then add up the results. According to our algorithm, the hexadecimal number B8 is equivalent to the decimal number 184. While this is useful and all, the real fun comes when converting hexadecimal numbers into binary. It turns out that each digit of a hexadecimal number can be perfectly represented by four binary digits, or bits. To see why, take a look at this conversion table. The table shows the binary conversion for each of the single-digit hexadecimal numbers 0 through f. For clarity, let's add some leading zeros to each of the binary numbers so that they all have the same number of bits. Each of the digits 0 through f fits nicely into a maximum of 4 bits, and we can use a table like this to quickly convert a hexadecimal number into binary. Let's use the table to convert the hexadecimal number ACDC directly into binary. First, for clarity, let's split apart each of the digits. Then we replace each digit with its binary equivalent, according to the table. Finally, we recombine all the binary digits, and the conversion is complete. If we were converting this number to decimal, we'd have to wrangle with some pretty obnoxious powers of 16. Converting it directly into binary, on the other hand, is easy as we only need to perform a simple conversion on each of the digits one at a time. Another great thing about the process is that it's easy to reverse. Let's take my name and convert it from binary into hexadecimal. First, we line up the binary that represents my name and split it into 4-bit chunks. Then, using the table, we convert each chunk into a single hexadecimal digit. Finally, we recombine the digits to form the full base 16 number. In addition to being represented in hexadecimal, this version of my name is also encoded in something called ASCII. ASCII, or in this case, extended ASCII, is an 8-bit encoding, meaning that it represents each letter using an 8-bit number. To see how this works, let's use an ASCII character code table to decode the hexadecimal that we have for my name. To start, we split the digits into four 8-bit numbers. Remember, a 4-bit number is represented by a single hexadecimal digit. So this means that an 8-bit number is represented by two hexadecimal digits. All that's left is to use the ASCII lookup table to convert each of the 8-bit numbers into letters. While it's somewhat challenging and takes a bit of practice, Recognizing the number 4e as meaning the letter n is somewhat easier than picking out a specific sequence of ones and zeros from a large sea of binary data. ASCII is only one of many ways to encode information using binary and hexadecimal. In future videos, we'll show examples geared towards NES development in particular, such as how games store sprite graphics or denote their machine code. Down in the description, I left a couple of links to conversion tables that were used in this episode. See if you can use the tables to write your own name or short message in binary or hexadecimal and leave it in the comments. Depending on how rude your message is, I may be inclined to respond. In this episode, we introduced binary and hexadecimal numbers showed how to perform some basic conversions between them, and explained a bit about how they're used with computers. Thanks for watching Nest Hacker. If you found this interesting and want to learn more, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon if you want to be notified when I post the next video on the channel. And if you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments.